everyone. Welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees, and today I'm thrilled to welcome Ekaterina Gordieva. Welcome to The Skating Lesson. Hi. <laughs> so we haven't Thanks. seen you skate in a couple of years, Katya, but I was watching sectionals recently, and I saw that you're coaching your daughter, Elisabetta. So how long have you been coaching skating for? Oh, I've been coaching skating for, I don't know, probably... Not intensively, but about more than 10 years, like around 10 years. Yeah. So yeah. But um, I always have a, always had small students, mm -hmm. like around the, from the beginners to maybe uh, seven years. I had a lot of seven years old, mm -hmm. some up to 14 years old. Sometimes. So what is it like coaching your daughter? Because I love my parents, but I couldn't imagine having my mom try to push me on the ice rink, get me to skate faster. It's yeah. Difficult. Well, the, the thing is that um, I, do, I don't really coach in here. I'm not the main coach. Your main coach right now, Rafael Arutunyan. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, because he's not traveling a lot with the younger skaters because he's busy. So I was traveling with her to sectionals and I'm obviously day to day, day every day I'm with her on the practices, but he's the main coach and, uh, but, um, she started with him just a year ago, mm -hmm. little, little, even less than a year ago. And before that, her father, Ilya Kulik was teaching him starting from, I would say seven, maybe years old. So uh, all the basics. And, well, I, I was working with her when she was very little. Mm -hmm. And then uh, um, when she was seven or eight, Ilya took uh, over and he taught her basically all the jumps. <laughs> okay. So I've read your bio and I know that you started skating at four. So how did you actually start you know, figure skating, was it something you chose to do? Did you kind of just try things out? How did that work? I, as I, uh, well, as, as I remember what my parents were saying is that mm -hmm. they wanted me to start some kind of a sport or maybe a dance studio or something like this. And then uh, they had their friends who is, uh, who's happened to be a skaters, not very close friend, but they, uh, they met mm -hmm. them somewhere. And so they were skaters and they said, we have, uh, um, why don't you want to, why don't you try to bring you to a skating club where we're mm -hmm. skating? And so that's how it started. Okay. I was a little bit too young because they, uh, started the school. You can get in the skating at five mm -hmm. and I was four, but somehow they figured it out and I started at four anyway. <laughs> well, I was four and a half. Yeah. <laughs> so did you love it immediately? Was it something that you really enjoyed? I don't know. I was it was cool. It was interesting. And, uh, I wasn't bored there and, um, I like the kids around because it was always, it, it's never been, uh, when I grew up, it's never been one, one on one mm -hmm. code uh, lessons. It's always been as a group. So, and it's always fun when you with that friends, with okay. your friends and first, just, you don't know anybody, then you get to know your, uh, friends and then you became friends and it's 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 great to have uh, physical exercises we were we had to skate actually we had a lot of off ice we had ballet when I was uh, especially four five six years old we had a, had a lot of ballet had a lot of off ice we were, we would skate out outside rings um, not very often inside <laughs> even through the winter okay so when you did you have to try out for the school because you you started school but you you skated at CSKA which is one of the you know the most prestigious schools in mm -hmm. Russia so how did that work uh yes we would have to it's it probably uh it would call uh enrollment I guess mm -hmm. it was it was called en enrollment so they all the parents bringing their kids and they would give us a small test try this exercise try this exercise try this exercise and it probably was a maybe around 100 kids i don't know and then it's ended up maybe a half of it only they take because they would tell parents right away that the, that this kid is maybe a little bit too tall for skating or maybe a little bit too big for skating 
or she's not as coordinated as it has to be. So they would honestly save some save some time for her parents because yeah. they try the different sport. You, she's going to be too tall for figure skating, so don't 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 you want to try basketball <laughs> <laughs> or something? So things like that. So not everybody were uh, accepted in the school mm-hmm. right away. Now, from the start, were you very talented compared to the other kids, or do you remember? Yeah. Hard to say, I don't, I don't know, but I stayed. But I had to go through the test every September and every uh, at the, on May, yeah. around May or April, May, we would have competition. Mm-hmm. And at the competition, they will also, I guess, um, check. Uh, the criteria check the what they needed to know <laughs> how we had we were supposed to look and and they would let some kids go and some kids just uh, maybe wouldn't you know like my sister she she tried the same sport but she wasn't interested and so she just asked mom to quit it <laughs> <laughs> and your mom i read your mom worked for the the news agency she was working Yes, it is news, but the news that goes for TV. Okay. That's T A S C C T A C C. That's where TAS. That's where it shows. It's like it's like CNN, NBC. I okay. <laughs> and your dad was a dancer, so you had good genes. And did, was your dad performing as you grew up? Yes, as uh, he was traveling all over the world when I when I grew up, so Mm -hmm. he wasn't uh, home a lot. And he was a dancer, yes, starting, I don't know, like I think he's, uh, it's called Army, uh, also actually Army Club, uh, how do you call it? Yeah, I think somehow it was connected with Army Club, but he wasn't with me in the club, obviously, but he was, uh, there was a um, choir, Okay. The choir with the who they were singing Russian songs and that uh, was very popular and there was a group of dancers so they were they would travel together. Okay, and he was a folk dancer, right? Folk yes. dancer, yes, okay. not a ball. Okay. Yeah. So I guess at what point did skating become serious? You know, you start as a kid. Did, was it you know pretty intense early on, or when did the hours start? Well, sometimes you feel that it was intense, but. Mm-hmm. Um, I think up to maybe when I was 10 or 11, I started feeling that it's getting getting there, getting more intense. And uh, um, at that point, I had to decide because my dad wanted me to be a dancer. So mm-hmm. he took me to a dancing school, but I didn't like it. Uh, mm-hmm. To ballet, actually. Mm-hmm. School for ba- Bolshoi there. Bolshoi, okay. To go through the tests as well, but I think I wasn't... I actually wasn't tall enough. Okay. (laughs) Maybe so. Anyways, and um, uh, and then at the same time, uh, a coach came up to me and asked if I want to try out for pair skating. Okay. I was interested in that. At that, and um, I like well, and uh, the tryout was actually not like. Uh, right now I can see the tryouts here and they skate together right away. Mm-hmm. We didn't even skate together. We didn't even touch hands. We were just uh, on the same ice and coach uh, just see. It was two girls and uh, one and Sergey and one mm-hmm. boy. And so we, coach just um, took me aside and said, okay, come to the practice tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And did you have triple jumps at that point or did you? No, 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 just doubles, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so you did figures, you said, but you were telling me that you weren't good at it, or so? Uh, not at all. Some Because I was only, what, uh, nine, ten, mm-hmm. I couldn't even, I couldn't even con- concentrate on like how many turns I had mm-hmm. to do. Yes, it was very um, long hours of mm-hmm. uh practicing mm-hmm. these figures. I liked it, but it was a little bit boring. But... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wasn't very good at the competition. <laughs> <laughs> so when you and Sergey first teamed up, did you start competing early on? Because in the U.S., the teams, you know, start and they start doing jumps, skate together. What was it like, you know, in the Soviet Union? No, the, I, we would, wouldn't even think about competition for the first six months, for sure. Okay. So I think we we teamed up around August or September, mm-hmm. 
and our first competition were May or June. Okay. And, and it was really like very small, very small competition, not even like not even like sectionals or regionals or anything like this, just mm-hmm. very small competition. And then we would train all summer again and would start the season maybe in the fall. So what so are the, yeah. hour, hours and hours of, it's a lot of, mm-hmm. it's a, I think pair skating, it's so much you have to learn. Mm-hmm. It takes much longer <laughs> than the <laughs> So one of the things that stands out is the speed that you and Sergey had. So how much time was spent on that? Because even when you watch your first Olympics, he's trying to keep up with you during the performance. At the end of the program, you were skating as fast as the beginning of the program. Well, uh, yes, the, they were, coaches were very, um, not strict, but we spent a lot of time on the skating skills, mm-hmm. uh, especially when we became a a pair mm-hmm. team yeah we would be we would be working all morning session we would always have two sessions in the morning about one and a half hours and in the evening one and a half hours and uh always morning sessions sometimes it's full one and a half hours only stroking and steps and step sequences and uh, learning how to be exactly parallel mm-hmm. uh, how to um track each other when you're skating and stuff. Like mm-hmm. And did you like pair skating early on? Was it exciting or is it I liked it right away. I don't understand. I don't I don't know why, but it was really, really exciting. I think I start skating better right away, even <laughs> as a single skater when I was when I started pairs. But um yeah, it was a little bit uh, it was a little bit harder because it was a lot of concentration, a lot of new stuff you have to try, but it always was exciting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what was Sergey like when you were young? Because in your book, you said that he didn't like skating that much or that he maybe didn't like to practice. So <laughs> he was just normal teenager boy mm-hmm. because he was 14, 15 at that mm-hmm. time. And uh, yeah, he was into uh, different things in mm-hmm. life, not too much into skating, yeah. but he liked it. I think, I'm mm-hmm. sure he liked it. If he wouldn't, then he mm-hmm. wouldn't come to practices. And he was very talented and um, he actually was not very good uh, single skater too, mm-hmm. so he already had a couple. For sure, he he had a couple triples or maybe even three triples when he started skating with me. I was really behind, <laughs> but you were um, ten. <laughs> yeah, I was eleven. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, and at that time, eleven. It's now eleven, and kids already jumping triples. It mm-hmm. used to be just just doubles. Mm-hmm. I I learned my double axel when I was. 12, around 12. Okay. And did you try, when did you start trying triples? Because you, you did the triple toe. Did you try triple yeah, toe? Uh, yeah, like right away. We also 12, 13, probably we started mm-hmm. working on triples, but didn't put in the program till later. Okay. So your club had so many talented skaters from Arena Rodina and uh, Marina Sherkasova and Sergei Sakurai. So did you skate with them on the same ice or would you see them at the rink? Uh, I just I would see them at the rink all the time, and I would go and uh, spend a couple hours just watching their skating, they they training. Mm-hmm. I don't remember Ragnina training, but I remember uh, Cherkasova, Shafrai, Piestova, Leonovic, mm-hmm. uh, um, a couple more teams, and I always looked up to the up to mm-hmm. them, and I really enjoy watching them when I had time. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they would allow us on the ice to skate with them a little mm-hmm. bit, yeah. but we would, they were strong and different, different, different speed, obviously on the ice. So we were, we were able to skate maybe like 15 minutes as a, <laughs> as a price for us. If we skate well, you know. So at what point did you start to realize that you and Sergey had talent and that people, you know, thought that you were something special? I would say not till uh, junior world, maybe first time. Not not our first junior. That first junior world, I thought it was disaster because we were six and I loved the uh, the travel and the kid and the friends and everybody, mm-hmm. but um, the skating wasn't very good. And mm-hmm. um, but uh, when we won junior world, after that maybe yeah, mm-hmm. we got people interested in, in us and um, mm-hmm. a lot of people start working with us and uh, mm-hmm. yeah. 
the progress started. So how did you start working with Colonel Zhuk? How did that happen? You know, he was a very famous coach at the time, had worked with so many... Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. The thing is, I think even when we, uh, when our coach, because it all was in the same club, so mm -hmm. there's many coaches who are working. The Zhuk was one of the main coaches, and there's mm -hmm. a coaches who is working with the pairs, with the pair teams, but they just putting them together, teaching them elements. But Zhuk would always come come and check on us and like always knew what's happening with us. He wasn't involved in the whole process, but a little bit involved. Like he knew what's happening. It's all big system. Like this coach is working on the choreography and skating skills. This coach is working on elements and stuff. And by the time uh, when we, I guess, uh, when I was 13, mm -hmm. 13, I guess, 12, 13, maybe, so he took us, he took us over and started working with us a little bit more, and he worked with us closely right after Junior World, mm -hmm. and he took us all the way to, uh, to a real world. Okay. <laughs> I guess, what were his strengths as a coach? I mean, obviously you've, you know, written about him being difficult. He obviously had a lot of success. So what kind of an influence did he have on your skating? Um, I think he was very powerful um, in many ways. Uh, he was, when you work with him, you, I'd say he's he's obviously very strict. You really, mm -hmm. I was really nervous not to to do something what he asked me to do. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he was he had amazing experience, and uh, we were just little kids listening to what he's saying. But um, um, and I wasn't I wasn't even trying to understand. I was just copying whatever he was, uh, he's, he was doing and yeah. whatever he's asking me to do, even if I thought that it's strange <laughs> like that. We were, now we're going to do this exercise for like 20 times. I, I thought it's strange, but I will keep doing it and without the questions. And my parents was always like, oh, you have to be very happy that he's working with you guys. So just shut up basically and work <laughs> <laughs> so that's what i did and i i was kind of i guess i don't know i was strong from the like strong will or strong mm -hmm. maybe i i was able to handle his mm -hmm. um, um roughness okay. i would say he wasn't like he wasn't doing anything with the would scare me totally but it was he was just rough like and there was no no questions about oh my knee hurts or oh I can't do it today or I'm a little tired. You mm -hmm. just can't say it to him. Mm -hmm. so. And did you improve quickly with him? Did you see the improvement on the ice? Or? Uh, yes, I think the most of the improvement was of uh, he knew how to put the practice. So like for example, it would be a run throughs and it only can be clean run through so so the thing is that he would put i guess he would put confident in you mm -hmm. i guess because we uh, we start being more uh, consistent with the mm -hmm. element clean mm -hmm. with lines um just more more together um i don't know things like yeah. this i would say but the uh but we were just like a little, little soldiers. Like we didn't have a soul. And mm -hmm. we, I, I would say when we were training with him, it was just like, just do what he says. That's yeah. it. And it was perfectly parallel, perfectly done. Every practice, everything. So I think we grew as a team and uh, as a, and created our style much later with mm -hmm. Marina and mm -hmm. Stanislav. With Zouk, we just learned the very basic, very strong technique mm -hmm. uh, and uh, handling the the long hours of training. <laughs> <laughs> Is he the one who taught you your quad twist? Because I know that Marina and Sergey had done it. Marina, 
to a cast member. Yeah. yeah, I think um, I don't know. Like we would train, uh, we would train with uh, several teams, not with Cherkasov and Chakrai because they were a little bit older. So we would train with the other teams, and um, yes, I can't rem- I can't remember if it was exactly with Zhuk, mm-hmm. but he always was pushing. Like he would make us train triple act, tra- throw triple act. So. I was always really scared of it, and uh, we would spend a lot of hours off ice to mm-hmm. train quad um, twist and uh, mm-hmm. throws, triple axial quads. He was always on like forward, 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 um, mm-hmm. at least off ice for sure. And I, I think we will we learned it with him, mm-hmm. pretty sure. um, like almost as was never would be enough, mm-hmm. like almost taught you how not to be scared okay because sometimes he would make us do really weird stuff that you wouldn't like jump you know jump in the swimming pool from the height okay from the, the, the platform height. yeah platform like it was about um 10 meters for sure okay. and i would be like what 12 13 <laughs> he would say just jump and I couldn't even swim very well. He said, no, you have to jump. So it's like he would teach you how to break yourself. Basically. Okay. Break, just break your scares that, that mm-hmm. you scare of something. And so that's how you get into quads. That's how you get into, like, it has to be some extra step mm-hmm. to the higher level to do it right okay. so you, you you can if you scare or if you trying to save yourself it's not you're not for the sport mm-hmm. not for skating anyways <laughs> so your first year senior you finished second at the soviet nationals behind volovan vasiliev mm-hmm. you know, did you expect to finish that high you know did you have that goal did you have any idea that you were that good or i i don't i don't think so it will never been in my head that I'm, I mean, I knew I can skate clean. That's mm-hmm. all I knew, but there's no time to, for me to analyze mm-hmm. all the other teams. I, I would, we would be sometimes even at the same place, training at the same place. So I always see them, what they doing. And, but for me, they always were older and uh, more experienced teams. Uh, mm-hmm. So I don't know. I just knew that, I had to do it clean, <laughs> otherwise <laughs> not gonna be happy. <laughs> <That's all. laughs> no, it wasn't very difficult for me because the train we had mm-hmm. to, so many hours of training, so you mm-hmm. just go and skate your mm-hmm. everyday run through. <laughs> now, when you would compete, were you like, did you want to win for yourself, or are you just trying to like not get in trouble? You know, at the end of the day, <laughs> yeah, something between. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I did not try to win for sure. For a, mm-hmm. I did not try to win till maybe the only thing when I was thinking of winning would be Lilyhammer '94. Okay. Because, but before that, it was just like a going, going, going without thinking that mm-hmm. okay, now it's Olympic Games and we want to win. No, I just knew that I have to skate clean and that's mm-hmm. it. And then up to judges. Mm-hmm. So you talk about run throughs now. It's some Russian skaters didn't used to do full run throughs. Would you do full run throughs of your program every day? Yes, sometimes two back to back. Okay, it looked like that. Yes. <laughs> How? Yeah, it, not uh, like he had always. So our coach always had a like, system. Mm-hmm. I guess like any coach right now. So when you have to do the run throughs, when you can take uh, some just mm-hmm. part of your program. But yeah, we pretty much had a lot mm-hmm. of. Now, your first year at the World Championships, you wound up winning. So, was that a shock or did you even think? Yeah, that was a shock. Okay. The first, first World Championship, was, I did not expect it for sure. Okay. And did the did the other team skate well, Volovan Vasiliev, or was it? I don't remember. She never allowed us to watch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I only saw them on the practice and they were very good. Yeah. Yeah. So how did your life change once you become world champion? You're 14. That's very young. I mean, did you like comprehend it? I mean, is there? Uh, I felt it a little bit with my school, uh, mm-hmm. in the school with my school friends, mm-hmm. just because when I came back to school, everybody were a little bit. They knew that we're 
we did that because we had a sports school. Everybody mm-hmm. were athletes. Okay. So everybody were knew what's ha- what what happening, and um, and the teachers also were proud of us, proud of me. I don't know my parents too a little bit. I felt it, but um, I don't know if it did a very big change in my okay. life at that point. Just probably with friends a little mm-hmm. bit and with the atmosphere in the school, maybe, I would say. So who are your classmates? Because I was watching uh, the Red Army documentary about hockey and they were, you know, training at your school, you know, the national team hockey players. So who is in your class? You know, are there very famous athletes that you went to school with? Yes, uh, Pavel Bure, the mm-hmm. hockey player. So I was in the school with him. I mean, in the class with him. So there was a whole team of soccer players but i can't i'm not so much into soccer yeah. so i don't remember but yes he was one of the, he was one of the other famous athletes i can't mm-hmm. there was swimmers there was a gymnast mm-hmm. but i i can't say any other name except pavel mm-hmm. and his brother who you skated who, with who would, and his brother was in the same school, but like three years, I think, younger. Mm-hmm. Yes. So uh, Tarasov had trained at the school. Was Tatiana there as well, working with Ice Dance? Or... No, she worked, she worked at a different club. Okay. And I never were really, I never saw Tarasov. Also. Okay. You may be, was he in army? I don't know. He know. was, like, but something my happened. Time was deep enough. Okay. My time enough so i can't say <laughs> what happened yeah and i knew that tarasso was teaching in a different club okay so at what point did you meet marina zueva and when she was at a, she was in school as a for a choreographer is that how you met yeah yes that's how we met her so she just came and started working with us just slowly she, we probably were her first uh, her first students i would say she was maybe 20, I don't know, three, something like this. I don't even remember. I remember she was very, very young and I didn't even know that she was a dancer. Mm -hmm. Later on, I found out. But we needed a choreographer uh, on daily basis, just work with us with the programs and work uh, on our uh, ballet uh, technique, just the Mm office. So she worked with us a lot. A lot involved there every day, and she was in school at the same time. It calls Gitis, Gitis, I think. I'm, I mm-hmm. I uh, know how to translate, but it's um, it's like um, uh, Juilliard or ballet. Yeah, more like arts and ballet, mm-hmm. uh, arts and uh, maybe even management of. Uh, uh, it's a big school, big mm-hmm. famous college. Yes. Okay. So she at the, at the college at the same time, so she probably was no more than twenty three. So one of my favorite programs you ever did was your short program to the jazzy piano, where you wear the striped shirts in the uh, different really? colors. <laughs> yeah, is that a marina program or? Yes. Okay. Yes. So starting from actually starting from uh, from uh, junior world. Yes, mm-hmm. at Junior World, that it was her first programs, I think. Okay, and did she and really? Starting from there, we always worked with her. Only. Okay, now, um, how did you start moving to Stanislav Leonovich from uh, Colonel Juk? Like, how did that happen? I mean, he was such a famous coach. Do you have that kind of freedom in the? Um, um, not we did not have that freedom. Okay. But at some point, uh, Zhuk's health was not, um, I guess, good, good enough for him to teach. Okay. Because he would would be, he wouldn't show in the practices mm-hmm. for like a period of time, and um, and uh, Sergey didn't like because sometimes he would be too rough on Sergey. Mm-hmm because I guess I was too little and he wasn't able to, like, um, I, I can see that Sergei wasn't very happy to train with him. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and Leonovich became a coach at that time. 
and that's how we started to work with Leonovich. So and he, sometimes still would come to the practices, but something happened and they took him out of the coaching at all at some point. I guess it was something with his health or with his um, habits or I don't know. Yeah. Like he, was, he wasn't allowed to teach for a little bit. He was. He came back after, but at his, he mm-hmm. was out for several months and you can't be without the coach mm-hmm. for several months so we, they just suggested it all in, in all in one club club so they just tell us okay now you're gonna just skate with Leon Lodge, and we mm-hmm. weren't happy with that okay and what was he like as a coach i know that he was a student of Jook, so how yeah, yeah. just skating and uh uh he probably finished skating career right away became a coach and he was also very young, not experienced as a coach, but somehow he was very, very involved together with Marina, with us. And uh, he, I remember that he showed a lot of things with me on the ice because he was still strong and able to skate. So it was great because he would um, he would show me everything on the ice, off the ice, some lifts. And so it was really cool. And uh, we became a very tight, great team mm-hmm. all of us all that and just grew it mm-hmm. I was very happy with both of them and it was important for me because at some point they even tried to um, tell Sergey to leave the school because because something I don't know exactly but um, like because he was um, trying to say what he wanted to say to coaches you know Mm -hmm. like that i don't like this system i want this i don't want this and uh, so at some point uh one of the coaches said okay then you have to leave the school and i said well if sergey leaving the school i leave the school as well i'm not Mm -hmm. i'm not changing the partner and uh and then they okay then you can stay in so he can also it's all like we never changed the school so it wasn't a big change for us but the coaches uh, always changed mm-hmm. so i guess the one time that inexperience showed is you actually skated a program and the music stopped because the strap on sergey's skate came undone at the europeans so mm-hmm. do you remember skating that program like in yeah. panic or <laughs> okay no this was actually like i i remember it's very clearly uh, yes, uh, we wasn't, uh, the, the thing is that we wasn't, um, by the Zouk, we always mm-hmm. knew that we have to skate no matter what, like if something happened, if something gonna lay down on the ice, like something fall from the ceiling, and you still have to skate, if the ceiling gonna fall down, you still have to skate, <laughs> so that's how we were trained, and so we won't be distracted by any anyone or anything. He always taught us this. And so the music stopped. And so we still have to, I had looked at Sergey. he's like, continue skate, skate. And so we just continue skating. And then um, we didn't even see, because we were look, looking at the coach all the time, because we were waiting for orders from the coach, but we did not even look at the judges. <laughs> and hear that he's running around and, whistling and and it was our mistake a loose strap at the bottom of the right leg of green cup that strap is meant to hold the pant leg down to the boot now referee ben wright saw the loose strap and under the rules he can stop the performance if he feels it's dangerous to the skaters that is referee wright blowing the whistle he tried to stop the performance skaters carried on so right stop the music and now you see him gesturing to the judges to withhold their scores the crowd however continue to encourage the skaters as they continue to skate Rodieva and Grinkoff continued the entire program Another buzzer sounded by referee Wright. Yet another whistle. Trying to get them to stop, but he was unsuccessful. The American referee 
all but jumped over the boards to try and get Gordieva and Grinkoff to stop. But the crowd would have none of it. And the skaters had obviously decided to finish their program. Their coach, Stanislav Leonovic, later told us that he told them to do so. He was hoping the judges would score them. It really was a shame, too, because every skater knows that when the whistle blows, the referee blows the whistle, you stop. And because they didn't, it cost them a chance at the championship. Total the applause, wild applause indeed, of the crowd at the Zetra, Gordieva and Grinkoff finished their program. But it would all be for naught. At this point, no one was quite sure what the ruling would be. Now, if you take a look at his right leg, you can see the strap dangling there. Now, if on the landing of this jump, he would have landed on the strap, he would have fallen. And if she would have been in a lift when he skated over his strap, there could have been a really serious injury. A somewhat spent-looking 15-year-old Ekaterina Gorchieva was met by her coach, Leonovich. Leonovich then went over to confer with the officials. This is no small matter. Next to the world championships, these European championships are the most important competition of the year for these two. And they are the defending world champions. As the officials conferred with a Soviet coach, the competition continued. The officials decided that Gordiev and Grinkov would be given a reskate after the final pair had competed. They were given two minutes to appear, but they were just too tired, and so were considered officially withdrawn. We asked the Russian team leader what he thought of the official decision. Of course, according to the rules, they should have stopped, but they did not understand this. They thought it was a technical problem with the tape recording, so they skated till the end of their program. I don't like to see any comp competitor denied the, the opportunity, but I have to say, in, in summary, that they did not understand, and they the broke the rules under which they operated, and that's their problem. And, and it was our mistake and our coach mistake that he did not explain the rules and we didn't read the rules that if the judge, if the referee stops you, then you have to stop. Mm -hmm. But we keep looking at the coach and coach was didn't say anything. He was just standing like this. He was, I guess, also not experienced or never had experience uh, like that. Mm -hmm. Now, you went on to win um, the world championships in Cincinnati for the second year mm -hmm. in a row. Now, I guess it, a lot of Soviet athletes talk about how different it would be to be in the U.S. compared to being in the Soviet Union. Did you even notice that as a kid, like having, you know, the difference in culture? Or... Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, every, everything was different. Okay. Anywhere overseas, it was different. Okay. Uh, especially before 90s. Okay. Like, we were competing. Every everything was different. Like I don't know stores, uh, anything. I remember I came to Junior World uh, Colorado Springs, and it was Christmas time because it was in December, and I was just shocked how beautiful everything was. The Christmas trees, and they had so many. Because back in Russia, we did not have so many even. Christmas toys or anything like this. So it was very simple. Everything was very simple. We would have everything, but not a big choices, not, uh, you know, not a big choices of food. The first time I came to Japan and I saw all this food and all this candy and it, it was crazy. It's all fruits. I did not even know the name of it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's all fun. Yeah. The, the, huge different that's why that's why always i never even thought of uh, competition too much i only thought of uh, oh how cool it will be to travel to this country or to this country so that was that what was my drive to skate <laughs> so i travel countries and would your parents be able to watch your skating on tv back home would they show the skating in russian tv no mm not live for mm -hmm. sure in a couple of days yes and then the bigger competition not junior mm -hmm. not junior old or anything like this uh but yes european championship they would show on tv but a little bit later okay like a couple of days later yeah. 
and uh, the same with um, Walt. Yes, they were able to see it. Now, in the United States, parents are known for being, uh, they can be overbearing with coaches or try to get too involved. No, your dad was a dancer. So would he watch you and give his opinion or no? Okay. And the very, first of all, it's not allowed uh, in Russia. It used to be like this. Uh, parents were not allowed, on, sometimes even to the ring. Okay. So they change you. They'll help you to change, put the skates on if you're six or after seven, you have to do it yourself. You're in a dressing room, you have to do it yourself. But before, yeah, but you can't, parents wasn't able to go and see you skating or any activities, no off ice, no ballet, everything mm. is behind the closed door because you trust coach. So that's it. Mm. So you give your child to a coach and then if there's some kind of a problem or if parents want to talk to a coach, you, it's all free. Please mm. talk. The, you know, we talk to like sometimes I would come up and say something about my practice and my, my mom or dad would go to a coach and say why she's saying this or why she's asking this. Questions like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, but my father, obviously on the competition, he can go see, or sometimes he can come up to a coach and ask, can I go and see mm -hmm. the practice today? Because I travel so much and can't, never can see her competing. Mm -hmm. They would allow, but uh, in general, it wasn't allowed. And um, yeah, and my, pa my, my dad was always uh, very strict with me as well. So like, Did he like your skating? Did he? Mm, no, <laughs> <laughs> until Olympics, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what didn't he like? Yeah, no, something. Or he would always find something to uh, uh, improve. Okay. <laughs> so when you were going for the Olympics, um, you know, what was that training like? Obviously, you're part of a huge sports system. Did you feel like gold was expected of you? Did you start to feel that pressure? Or... Uh, after. After. Yeah. Probably even in Cincinnati already the second world I already start feeling that okay we can we like more I would feel more pressure obviously than the first world. Mm -hmm. And as a kid did you have the dream of being Olympic champion like when you started skating did you look up and think like one day or? No I just want I I had a, um, my heroes as mm -hmm. a, actually Sergei Marina and Sergei. Mm -hmm. my, heroes as a pair of skater and I always wanted to be as light as she and like do the lifts as great as even Ilyanovich, my fiesta and Ilyanovich, I love how they ski. And, <clears throat> but I wanted to be like them, but I never thought of very much of uh, actual medal or mm. actual winning or things like this. Just to skate good. Mm -hmm. And back good in the I love it. <laughs> <laughs> did you, how often did you compete? You know, because nowadays skaters compete like seven, eight, you know, times yeah, in a season. Not that many, no. Well, we started, when was the first time we did Skate Canada? It was probably, uh, the, the Skate Canada was one of our first Grand Prix. Okay. And then, then after that, we would always have um, international competition in Moscow, actually, it calls Moscow News or, yeah. Moscow, or Moscow Skate, something like this. Okay. It was international. We would have a lot of international skaters, mm -hmm. and we would skate there. Mm -hmm. And then they would do a lot of, um, how to say, not the competition between us, but the run-throughs for Federation. Okay. They would do a couple, couple of those a year for Federation to see. It was mm -hmm. it was so difficult, almost like competition. Yeah. So but no, obviously not seven or eight. <laughs> That's, uh, national, maybe one Grand Prix, national European World Championship. Okay. So uh, the Olympic season, you had a concussion, right? That you had, you fall in practice. Yeah. Is that when you hurt your head? So did you, th I guess, how long did it take to recover from that? I mean, they even, how, like, how long were you off the ice for, even? Uh, about 10 days, probably, off the ice. Okay. Nowadays, you'd be off the ice really for months. Yeah. about that, but the coaches wouldn't let me go back on the ice. Okay. Like, yeah. For at least a week, for sure. Like, I was maybe four or five days even in the hospital. Okay. 
because they knew if I'm gonna get out, I will start doing something or like go nice, I guess. So the doctor's like, no, she has to stay in the hospital. And after about four days, I stayed in the hospital, and then maybe a week off the ice for sure, maybe ten days. Mm. So when you got back on the ice, how quick was it to get ready for the Europeans? Did you have a lot of time, or we had? Um, I think they let us. Uh, I can't remember. I think they let us the national. Okay. Because the competition were in December, mm-hmm. and then and then and then they. Um, mm-hmm. We only competed at European, mm-hmm. yes. So we, they let us skip the national because we weren't ready, I think. So when you got to Calgary, did you feel prepared, or did you? Yeah. 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 I, felt, yeah. I just felt like I wanted to be over. <laughs> <laughs> you, did you enjoy the actual the competition? Year, the whole year was so long and so much pressure because mm-hmm. the federation started talking about Olympics starting like in. June or July, so it was just long, <laughs> long process of preparation for Olympics. By the time it were Olympics, I was excited. Mm-hmm. I was excited just to go and travel again mm-hmm. and see how the Olympics are, mm-hmm. how it's, how different those competitions compared to mm-hmm. uh, compared to world or European, and mm-hmm. it was huge different. So you had one of the greatest. So it was, was interesting. Like, a little. Too much pressure, mm-hmm. I felt like. Well, you skated one of the greatest programs in the free skate there, and it was it looked flawless. Did you feel good skating it? Did you enjoy it? You yeah. know, I actually on the ice once I start skating, I felt better. Before it was just a pressure, and like you can see how tense everybody were, like how you like how big deal of everything. It was just like more than European or world championship just extra and so i just wanted to go out there and skate already and mm-hmm. just show and that's it now at those olympics you competed alongside legends katarina vitt brian boitano brian orser did you watch them in the competition did you yeah i watched all competition yeah it was amazing it was amazing uh battle between two Brian's and everyone, everybody skated so great. And Katarina and David Thomas and Liz, Liz Manley. I remember everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, was, it was huge. It was pretty, pretty uh, amazing. That was very, that, that I loved a lot to mm-hmm. watch the competition and see how everybody is uh, going over the limit of what they can do. Mm-hmm. So after that, you accomplished, you know, two world championships and Olympic games, did you feel motivated to continue? Did you, you know, have- I was really exhausted after the competition. Yes. Okay. And uh, I got sick at the world mm-hmm. championship. Um, just the stomach flu or something, like for a couple of days, I was really didn't feel good. I was just very drained out mm-hmm. after the Olympics. And uh, we didn't even go to uh, Tommy's tour that okay. year. <laughs> I was really, I guess, I was just tired mm-hmm. overall, and uh, so obviously not too much motivated mm-hmm. to think about years, but um, just somehow it just goes on. Like Marina said, "Okay, how about this new program we're gonna do?" And <laughs> she always was. <laughs> Finding the ways to make us go back on the ice. <laughs> now, had you wanted to quit, would you have been allowed to, I guess, at that time? Yes, you can. No, obviously, yes. Of course you can. And mm-hmm. uh, especially Sergei, he was always um, very strong in his opinion. And he mm-hmm. would, if he would say no, then mm-hmm. we'll stop, obviously. I'm not going to... I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But we both were agreed that we were mm-hmm. tired and we took longer time off than mm-hmm. usual. So usually pairs have a leader. So was Sergey the leader of the pair? Were you the leader, like the more strong-willed between the two of you? Well, I thought that I am, but honestly, he was a... He would always were fi- would find a way to show 
that yes we will do whatever you want but without him i wouldn't do it <laughs> yeah i knew he is my my strongest strongest side of mm. the so you fell in love after the Olympics. So did that make the skating more interesting then as you, you know, started competing again? Did that kind of... It was maybe a different side of the skating and uh, because we were a little bit more involved with each other, it would be a little bit more interesting because we would do things together, mm -hmm. off-ice as well. And um, it's just like a different level of life <laughs> yeah okay so i remember reading your book as a kid and i have to ask you how to pronounce a russian word because you talked a lot about a daca is that what it is or a dasha is the book you talk about the sauna and you felt dacha, dacha. okay dacha. i didn't know if that's why dasha is named dasha if that has, <laughs> has nothing to do this is nothing no yeah dacha dacha is like a, a low cost like a lake house okay a couple of, like an hour away from city. Okay. You know? Everybody, Good. most of the people would have that check. Okay. In, because the city, city is a city, and then for days off or vacation, people would go. Okay. Did you get, like, did the government give you gifts if you win as an athlete? Like, when you win gold medals, do you get anything? Like, you're winning a lot for the Soviet Union, so. As a Soviet Union for uh, for Calgary, mm -hmm. I got uh, three thousand dollars, <laughs> and I got. Um, um, they would let us buy because for us and back in Russia to be able to buy the car, mm -hmm. you because it wasn't enough cars, so you you have to stay pre-order it, mm -hmm. right? Stay in line, for example. So they would. So we didn't have to pre-order that they would let us just buy the car if we want. So what kind of car did you get? <laughs> it's called Volga. Volga? <laughs> it's called Volga. But I, because I was 16, I didn't need it. Okay. But I was still uh, allowed to get it. Obviously, my dad got the car. <laughs> okay. So then he liked your skating. So that it was good. Yes, after that. <laughs> <laughs> So you continued on and you skated probably just as well at the world championships the next year as you did at the Olympics and but, uh, Paris. Paris. Oh, I had a, I had an injury uh, mm -hmm. the whole year. Of, yeah, so my, did you uh, miss most of the year or? Yeah, we did not. Um, I think we competed maybe at Skate Canada again. Okay. And after this. I can't remember when the injury <laughs> happened, but it was a, a stress fracture on okay. my foot. So I wasn't able to, I was in the cast for a month, for sure. Mm. Okay. So I was able to skate. We, we didn't do, I don't think we did national or European championship. Mm -hmm. I remember we traveled to European championship. To, to watch. watch. Okay. Uh, to, yeah, to watch, yeah, in uh, England. Okay. Now, now, when you, at the time when you were competing, did you know that around the world everyone loved your skating and ex thought that you guys were perfect and expected you to win? Did you know that, like on TV, that they would say, like, this is the greatest ever? Okay. Mm, first of all, I did not know English so well, and uh, obviously I could not understand exactly what, but we knew that the people loved our skating and mm. uh, we. Um, but because in Russia it was a little bit close mm. to everything, to a news, to and they would always tell us we, we couldn't even speak to um, journalists without mm. asking coach, making sure okay. the coach knows about it, making sure one of the people from Federation would know it. So it always was set up. So we were they were trying to protect us from all the fame and mm -hmm interviews and obviously there was no social media, <laughs> yeah. media back then, and so it was just yeah we knew like we we, we are in favor and mm -hmm. people loved our skating and mm -hmm. that that was basically yeah. about it but, um, and back in russia yeah we got uh, people would recognize us mm -hmm. yes. 
And would the government watch you at competitions to make sure you don't run off and skate for the U.S.? Or did you... We always have people, couple people from um, government. Okay. With us in the team. Okay. I don't know if it's KGB or not KGB, <laughs> but I don't want to say from... anything. <laughs> <laughs> but someone from uh, someone from um, government would travel. So some someone who never have nothing to do with skating would always travel with us, and he mm-hmm. was just uh, as a person who. Just travel with us and mm-hmm. making sure everything is alright. Yeah, <laughs> I guess like that. So I know that passports and stuff. So. Like... Mm-hmm. So in your book, you wrote about how afterwards for the 1990 season, you know, you started becoming a woman. Sergey had injuries, and you started to, you know, become burned out on the ice. So had you been thinking about winning another Olympics, or did you know at this point this is? No, we did not thought about it. Like we thought that maybe it's enough for us to skate. We have, uh, yes, yeah, Sergey had injury on his shoulder, so the lift was really difficult for him to do. And then it was a little bit um, the situation with uh, Marina and Stanislav also was a little difficult because I think they wanted to. I don't know what was first, but I remember that Stanislav wanted to go with his family to a different country. Okay. To to teach and to to leave, maybe to move, or he maybe he was invited as a coach there. To it was it was Paris, France, mm-hmm. I think. And then the same with Marina mm-hmm. as well. So you know, everybody had families, and so it somehow it started to spread away a little bit so and then we decided with Sergey that maybe we should either change coach mm-hmm. or maybe stop skating so it was like a kind of a slow down <laughs> period of time. yeah and then finally when the season came we decided okay we just have to take time off for sure mm-hmm. or maybe we, and since it wasn't it wasn't possibility to take time off mm-hmm. but then you just quit yeah amateur skating so and so we did okay. and we decided that we're just gonna do and uh, tatiana tarasa she had a uh, ice theater like mm-hmm. um, very famous with uh um tor Villandin was mm-hmm. there in the theater so it was really really cool and she invited us to see it and um actually what's funny is that my dad was working at that at that point with them with tarasava yeah, because he stopped dancing and he became um, start uh, helping her with the costumes, with the stuff. And because he was in, still involved a lot with theater and he mm-hmm. had a lot of access to a costume and uh, maybe some other organizing. Okay. So he was helping her anyways. And so um, that's how we became involved in that. Uh, theater professional so, life <laughs> so tatiana is bigger than life so <laughs> what is she like to work with you know uh, artistically you know she just would come to the practice and she would start creating something with us she was like oh, we will try this element we'll try this because she had a huge experience in pair skating and dance uh, with dance teams and we always were close to the roof to everything so it was really interesting mm-hmm. so she just made us think differently try many many different lifts small lift big lift uh we start trying we, we start acting like a little bit more on the ice and so she did a couple numbers for us and we did some professional uh competition uh at that that year and then and then we traveled with your theater mm-hmm. for a little bit as well. And it also was just uh, very interesting, a little bit tough because all the time you know what you're doing and what you what why you're doing it and mm-hmm. things like this. You know, when you're in sport, you're just so focused on in the result and the training and everything is on the schedule. And all of a sudden, here a little bit more open. You're not supposed to jump so much you're not supposed to do this element you you can do whatever you want you're a little bit more open and uh, and free and and that makes you scared because you think okay 
I, I don't know if I want this or not. So it's, uh, I, I think it, every athlete go through it. But um, uh, did you like show skating? Because sometimes people don't like the shows as much in the beginning. Not yeah. right away, obviously. Mm -hmm. Not right away. It's still like, why do I have to wear this costume and why it's, this music is weird and things like that. But then, then you learn and then you find like because I just like skating in general. Mm -hmm. So I learned how to learn how to love uh, or like I uh, found the things that I love anyways. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and again, it was involved traveling, so it was mm -hmm. great. <laughs> and we were more about our romantic side with Sergey, so mm -hmm. it was it was better because mm -hmm. we had more days off, not so strict, not so tired. So we have it just happened that we had mm -hmm. more time for each other mm -hmm. at that point. Now, one of the things I want to ask is, you obviously toured on Stars and Ice and with Christy Yamaguchi for so many years. So, did you remember her competing pairs when she skated with Rudy? Like. Were you competitors? Yeah. Yes. So we did pair it actually together for sure. Maybe one more world after that. Yeah. <laughs> how good was she at pairs? Like, was she? I was, it was amazing how, first of all, it's amazing that she was great at, as a single skater, mm -hmm. skater and also were able to to do a pair skating and mm -hmm. they were jumping in a different direction they were they were very very interesting mm -hmm. team i i loved watching them but mostly for me it was in, i was amazed how she can do two disciplines and mm -hmm. uh, be great at that yeah mm -hmm. one of the most impressive things is you had a daughter you came back on the ice quickly and most people don't have a kid and then want to go back to the olympics so <laughs> what possessed you to say like I want to do the Olympics again because it has to be a lot of stress and expectations when you come back yeah so that's that's how it's happened like I said that we were planning on not mm -hmm. you know not skate anymore and it was fine and I remember that I was pregnant and watching that Albertville mm -hmm. Olympics and at that point I understood that I still miss it like mm -hmm. I didn't even thought about it and I was fine. But at the Olympics, when I was watching the Olympics on, on TV, at that moment, I was thinking, I really miss it and I want to do it again. I want to compete again a little bit. Obviously, we talked about it a little bit, but uh, it wasn't it wasn't possibility like that at mm -hmm. that point. And we, we had a stars and ice contract anyways, and uh, we enjoyed our... Uh, skating, at, at, we, we enjoyed France, we enjoyed tour, uh, touring, everything was fine. And uh, But just somehow we started skating more and more and kind of train more. And even during the uh, Stars and Ice tour, we would, we would stay over longer hours and train. And mm -hmm. we got somehow to the pretty good shape. Mm -hmm. but, but we got back in shape and so and then at some point marina i think we did canadian tour she saw us and she's like guys how about you come mm -hmm. back to the olympics i said how is it possible and she said by brian by tana is thinking about it and mm -hmm. i she she said i think i think he's writing a letter to federation he can mm -hmm. be <clears throat> And then somehow, I don't remember when, and then Katarina was mm -hmm. thinking, was thinking about it, and then Torville and Dean, so, and that became, and we all wrote a letter, mm -hmm. I, we had to write letter to Russian Federation field, and then to uh, East ICU, mm -hmm. and, and so somehow it just uh, came all together, and we stayed with that, and it was just more exciting to be able to, be able to come back and get mm -hmm. back and share. And not even winning, really, but like it was for us, it was amazing mm -hmm. just to be back on the ice and back in training routine. And when it got to, obviously, it was up and down, too. Like, sometimes, like, oh, no, it's not a good idea. <laughs> how did <laughs> you get anymore? back in shape? Like, did you have to do more off ice? I mean, how did you, uh, you were in amazing shape in 1994. Yeah, but the thing is, with the tour, mm -hmm. I think that's where we started, really. Like with the tour, with all the with all the shows, mm -hmm. like sixty or mm -hmm. it was plus Canada mm -hmm. tour, it was over 
70 shows we did and with that we on the ice all the time and we start putting um, triple throw and we start putting triple twist obviously in the program so and it became just a kind of a training process <laughs> <laughs> the tour became a training process and that's that's it and then we we actually wanted to ask Tarasova again to take us because we needed a coach. We knew mm -hmm. Marina will do the programs and everything, but um, we needed Tatiana. Mm -hmm. I mean, was thinking that Tatiana is going to help us to train, but mm -hmm. she said she will. She she wouldn't have time. Okay. Because she has another work, and uh, and and she. I, I think, as I remember, she was saying, like, if you have Marina, you will be fine. So just work with her. But we took our very first coach to help us as well. So who was your, yeah, I always wondered who coached your jumps. Because we see Marina and the Kiss and Cry in Little High. Yeah. So who was your first coach? This, this guy is put us together, like, in the very beginning in Army Club. His name is Vladimir mm -hmm. and the last name uh, Zaharov. Okay. Yes. So, so we went back to him and and because we needed a coach and can you please take us again? He said, "You guys, you don't need much help, but well, we need we need your help, we need your guidance." So, and so he worked with us and took care of everything. We went to Marina for like almost three months first and worked with her on the programs and and we were lucky that my mom was able to travel with us and help with Daria. Mm -hmm. So competing again, now that you know what's at stake and now that you've, you're older, how different was it? Did you feel the nerves more, you know, that season? It was, uh, I think it was more nerves or more pressure toward us. We mm. see that everybody not happy that we're back. And, <laughs> and, like, um, we all the time were questioning, do we need to do it or not? But uh, as an athlete, we felt stronger mm -hmm. with experience from the show, with experience from the coaching, and stronger as a, together as a team, mm -hmm. like together as a husband and wife. Mm -hmm. That's that's brought us a little bit uh, in. Uh, I think brought gave us a little bit more strength, mm -hmm. I would say, to compete and everything. Yeah, but at the same time, we would put more pressure on us mm -hmm. because why would we come back to lose, right? Yeah, and you're competing but, against Olympic champions from Alberville with Miss Kachanak and Dmitriev. So <laughs> that must have been a stressful national championships. Uh, it, it was, yes, it was. And um, we actually didn't skate. I think we, as I remember, we didn't skate very well. Or it was different. Maybe it was different national. Um, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I think. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> Too long ago. But anyways, yeah, like in Russia, it was stressful. It always national national championship much mm -hmm. stressful than European and world. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> when you... every uh, that's where you show your program first, mm -hmm. not first time, but anyways, like first time on the competition in front mm -hmm. of Russian people and. It was always mm -hmm. more stressful a little bit. Yeah. So you, at the Olympics, I don't think you've actually ever made a mistake at the Olympics. Were you perfect the whole time? Are there things that we don't see? Because when I watch, I know that you had maybe Sergey missed a, you know, a double flip or a single sal cow or something, but did you actually make any mistakes at the Olympics? I don't know, but I was feeling... Uh stronger i was feeling mm -hmm. stronger than even in 88 or mm -hmm. any other competition somehow it's just like more in the zone or i don't know mm -hmm. maybe uh just stronger insight maybe mm -hmm. not physically but just because you're mentally stronger mm -hmm. so both of the programs that you did in 94 were amazing you know they took the artistry to a new level you know, did you have more input in the programs? Were they Marina's idea? I mean, how did that come about? No, it's, as usual, all, everything was Marina's ideas, most mm -hmm. of it anyways. And then, um, obviously, because we grew older already, mm -hmm. we not just listen, we tried to put our input, our, mm -hmm. our artistry in the, mm -hmm. in the program. And that's how it um, became a little bit more 
our life, mm -hmm. just with experience, I guess. Yes, if mm -hmm. before we were we would be just doing what we've been told, mm -hmm. then through the shows as well, because it was two years of experience working with uh, different choreographers mm -hmm. through different shows. We worked with Toller Cranston. We worked with. Uh, Sarah Kawahara during mm -hmm. those two years. So it was really worked with Scott Hamilton mm -hmm. with, uh, I think that all this was built up a little mm -hmm. bit. Us, and then by the time when it was competition, I'm pretty sure it's helped. <laughs> Are there moments from the Olympics that you remember that like stick out in your memory as like? Uh, yeah, I remember everything. Uh, okay. 94, I remember most of it compared okay. to 88. Mm -hmm. In 88, I was in. But in 94, yeah, I remember most of the things th that were in the place. <laughs> Are there moments of your program that, you know, you're proud of, you know, specifically or anything that really stands out to you from 94? Mm. I haven't won a gold medal. I was so in I'm... a <laughs> short program and okay. I was very proud that we skated it. Well, we still did some off on, at the, on, on the speed, I think. Mm -hmm. um, not, not mistake, but like the, the, per, mm -hmm. the synchronization. Not yeah. synchronization was mm -hmm. a little bit off, but because we just were supposed to be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, I was very proud and happy about the sh short program because mm -hmm. because it's, it's always hard for program to start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, free program was already kind of a little bit easier somehow mm -hmm. for me. So after that season, you obviously were touring in, you know, with Stars on Ice and also in the U.S. Skating was so huge because of everything that happened with Nancy and Tanya during the Olympics. So I guess for you, <laughs> did you feel it, you know, the energy being different in the States and what, you know, was that entire experience like for you? you know? uh, it was unbelievable, actually, in the States that, uh, that year, mm -hmm. uh, Tom, Tom Collins tour we would have the probably the smallest audience was 8,000 or 10,000. Every building would be full of, mm -hmm. and it's about 15,000 people. Mm -hmm. It was just unbelievable. The skating was so huge and um, uh, just, it was just great. Mm -hmm. I don't know, we were strong. Everything was falling into place, you yeah. know? <laughs> The, mm -hmm. the fame of all the skaters, obviously it was all this not very nice story and the mm -hmm. same with, uh, maybe there was a big story with, about Bayou, Laksana Bayou, okay. was with, about her mom and everything. So it was just a lot of stories, mm -hmm. but um, overall it was, um, I thought, overall it was mm -hmm. skating one of the best years. Mm -hmm. Now, the next year, you skated that program about the sculptures. I remember at the World Professional Championships. Yeah. And it was as if you were competing at an Olympic Games. You know, the intensity level, it seemed like. I guess for you, does that competition, was it very serious? Like, uh, when you're competing? Yeah, we took it as a competition because okay. it's called World yeah. Professional Championship. Obviously, we took it as a competition. And I think the same was with Brian Vaitana mm -hmm. or any other, like Midori Ida. Mm -hmm. She was doing triple axel at the yeah. World Championship. Um, uh, so uh, it was intense. It was intense. And it's uh, because everybody were in good shape and everybody was still uh, performing their best. Mm -hmm. Still in, in good shape mm -hmm. after amateur career yeah it was uh, it was just a lot of them too it was just a lot of skating so everybody were on mm -hmm. top of the yeah. game <laughs> yeah and obviously after Sergey passed away you were you had a book come out you know it seemed like your management really had you do a lot of things you know and I haven't gone through things where a tragedy happens and it's the last thing you want to talk about and then you're on TV all the time I guess, how hard was that for you? Because I feel like they really marketed you as like Jackie Onassis of figure skating. You know, did you feel that? Yeah. Yes, I did feel that. Uh, but maybe not in the beginning. It was just like almost uh, as a robot, you know, mm -hmm. like they 
you do this and now we do this and it was the book was kind of healing mm -hmm. process i think i did not realize that because it was just uh, the guy was talking to me mm -hmm. and it was just like interview after interview after interview mm -hmm. and then he uh it's it, it wasn't it was difficult for me i shouldn't say it's not difficult because it was just like mm -hmm. memory everything but at the same time i guess it was a healing process because mm -hmm. you just keep talking about it and thinking about it and mm -hmm. it some, somehow helps but um the traveling for the book was tiring and because everybody wanted to express their feelings and i understand that everybody wanted to talk to me or something and you kind of taking it seriously as mm -hmm. well but then i remember that after that year i was also very mm -hmm. drained out and didn't want mm -hmm. to see anybody and had my uh, problems <laughs> for a little yeah but yeah it is it, it is not it it just yeah. happens but i wasn't even able to think that i can just say i can't do this anymore yeah. and mm -hmm. this I think at some point um, my agent understood that maybe it's enough and mm -hmm. they let me rest. I mean, had you even, you're a girl from Russia, did you even know who Oprah was before you met her? I mean, um, I've heard, I've heard, I've heard, yes. Yeah. Uh, no, my agent, <laughs> agency explained to me everything what's happening. And, yeah. yeah. So, what yeah, are the, she... yeah, one of the biggest memories of your career is obviously you skated a tribute to Sergey. Your first solo performance, you said since you were eleven. So, I guess how much how much time did you even have to prepare? And now you're skating alone. I mean, what was that moment like? Was it healing? Was it? It was hard, stress, yeah. stressful, and hard. Um, but that's the only way I could express mm. and not thought to people or. Um, mostly, that was probably for me because I was just busy and training and back to what I used to do anyways mm -hmm. to be on the ice and skate but um, and be around my friends who I was just skated with a couple mm -hmm. months ago but yeah just it's just like everything a little bit in the foggy yeah but it definitely skating mm -hmm. definitely helped. Mm -hmm. It was difficult, but at the same time, you know, you doing something mm -hmm. what you used to do physically and just mm -hmm. help uh, help uh, mm -hmm. it's mentally helped me mm -hmm. just to do something. So you've skated so many years as a professional, and it seems like it has just kept going and going. I guess. How long had you planned on skating? You know, did you think like, oh, I'll skate tour for a couple of years? I mean, are you still performing now? What is, you know, your... <laughs> yeah, we're talking right now and I thought, oh my God, I live so too long. <laughs> 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 uh, nah, just, um, I never planned how many years I'm going to skate because mm -hmm. I, it was always interesting. Every mm -hmm. year, it's like, oh, they invite me to Stars and Ice. Great. So mm -hmm. start thinking about the program. Then you go to rehearsal. Then it's just the whole process. Half the year is gone. Mm -hmm. Then it's another one. Oh, they invite me to another tour. Oh, great. So you just keep keep uh, doing it. You don't think. Um, um, I didn't think. It just just work and something what I like and I was uh, thankfully healthy through mm -hmm. the years and I uh, was always doing what I love to do with mm -hmm. my friends and it was always e easy easy for me it was just a little bit difficult not to see my family but we somehow managed uh, that I would go in the summer always when mm -hmm. I would have off time I would go to back to Russia so we always and my mom would come and travel with me and so is she is your mom here now and your sister or are they in russia or okay they in russia both of them in russia okay so i guess will we see you perform again i you know how many invitations do you get you know to do shows there yeah <laughs> no well uh, i think like maybe a couple of years ago i already said that maybe i can't travel that much especially mm -hmm. if you, not even a couple of years ago when lisa was born mm -hmm. it's already kind of slowed down 
a little bit and um, I started thinking that I need to spend more time with you and be more as a mom and then I start coaching a little bit so I was involved with some students and uh, I had to spend more time here home and and um, well I'm not young anymore I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just. Uh, <laughs> Are you I still in shape? I you know? have time off. I actually yeah. enjoy cooking. I enjoy being a mom. I enjoy being home. I have beautiful flowers in my house. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I'm. Uh, I'm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not a crazy mm -hmm. skater. Yes, I am, but. <laughs> <laughs> Will we see you on Dancing with the Stars? You know, it's the one show. You've won Battle of the Blades. You won it in Russia. You won Ice Age. So what, you know, will we see you on the dance floor? Uh, I don't know. I always thought about it. It would be cool. But somehow I never, uh, you know, never <laughs> right time. worked out so far. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe one day. Maybe yeah. you'll see me on Voice. Okay. <laughs> So, if, I'm very good cocktail. so what is it like for you to watch skating and then people like Tessa and Scott, the Marina will save your music for them. Like, does that, is that surreal for you yeah. or when? That was, that was very cool. Yeah. Watching the, the um, skaters cool. Marina was teaching. Yeah. That was, that was very, very good. The program were amazing. And I, I don't know. We didn't even see, I didn't even um, see Marina for a couple of years. And then I see this program and I can tell that it's like a, a bit, almost a message through the program. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. And she and they uh, unbelievable skaters. It was mm -hmm. very touching. And mm -hmm. uh, obviously Marina is very talented and uh, I hope she'll have more, more um, students mm -hmm. to give them so much talent as she has. What was it like working with her on Battle of the Blades? Because she worked with you and your partner and it seemed like it was like, <laughs> she was treating him like it was the Olympics. So yeah. Yes, yes he was very not happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, he said that was very cool, but is, does she know that I'm a hockey player, not the senior skater? <laughs> So she, but it was interesting, uh, interesting experience to work with her, and it was, uh, it was cool. And this whole Battle of a Blade uh, show was very, it was very interesting because somehow it's um, with both athletes, the hockey players and the figure skaters. So it was, it was easy for us to stay on the schedule to kind of we both they they um good at what they do and uh skaters good at what they do and so we kind of not competing against each other but they didn't want to they didn't want to show skaters that they can't do something mm -hmm. so it was really really high level mm -hmm. i would say competition <laughs> when you did it in russia was it the same high level the skating or how was it is it nerve-wracking working with it it was a little bit different. It was a little bit more artistic, I would say, mm -hmm. because those people never even stayed on the ice. Mm -hmm. Never even, maybe some of them never even watched figure skating. I mm -hmm. don't know. And um, so it was a little bit different. It was more oriented, even though I did also big leads and we did mm -hmm. some, some even throws. But uh, still, it was a little bit more uh, oriented on artistic. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was used to you skating very romantic programs, very beautiful. On that show, we saw a side of you. I was shocked. I Was that different for you? Yeah, to, that's what I'm saying, because it was a little bit more... You looked like, like an ice dancer, movie. like, yes. Like, yeah, it was also, because every program, as you can see, if you watch the show, every program was not... Uh, you can't even say that it's a program. The point of this show somehow because it was on tv every week it was more about not the sport mm -hmm. more about um create a little piece of the movie or mm -hmm. piece of uh, the theatrical mm -hmm. theatrical uh kind of piece so that was a great experience <laughs> you, yes you were like an actress on the ice it was amazing so well, thank you so much for coming on The Skating Lesson. I so enjoyed, you know, getting to know you more and talking with you, Katya. 
Thank you. Finally, we talked. <laughs> yes. Oh, thank you 